In this video, we're gonna look at how to use PS Poly to create resilient PowerShell scripts. So PS Poly is a wrapper around a very, very popular um, .NET library called Poly. And Poly has a bunch of um, cool little features to make .NET resilient um, you know, uh, applications. Um, but PS Poly is actually a wrapper around that particular library and provides some things uh, to PowerShell users. So some of the things that you can do are uh, retry, rate limiting, caching, and circuit breakers. So uh, PS Poly has a couple other things um, integrated that we might integrate eventually in PS Poly, but I'm just gonna show some examples of what's in PS Poly right now. So uh, you can get PS Poly from the PowerShell gallery by doing install module uh, PS Poly. And I am just going to pull up some examples. So the way that Poly works is it's a combination of creating a policy and then invoking a command using that policy. So uh, let's just do a simple retry policy. Um, and to do that, you're going to use new uh, Poly policy. And the Poly policy commandlet has a bunch of different um, parameter sets on it for the different types of um, poly policies you can create. So we have retrying, circuit breaking, um, timeout, which doesn't work right now, uh, absolute expiration and sliding expiration, and then um, rate limiting. So let's take a look at what it looks like to do a retry policy. So I'm just going to create a new poly policy uh, with the retry switch parameter and the retry count of 10. So what this policy is going to do is it's going to retry the script block up to 10 times before giving up. So uh, the other thing that we're going to use is invoke poly policy or invoke poly command. Uh, that particular commandlet accepts a policy uh, parameter where you can pass in the policy that we just created and then a script block. So I just have this super uh, simple script block that has a write host in it where it's going to write out trying every time the script block is called and then it's going to throw an exception. And you can see the output of um, this particular commandlet is that it, <clears throat> it outputs trying over and over again because it's retrying this commandlet. And we didn't have to write any logic to do the retries or anything like that. We just had that poly policy. And eventually uh, the retries fail and it uh, throws the exception that was being thrown over and over again. So this is like a simple way to kind of retry a uh, script block over and over again. So certain commandlets already have retry in them. Like for, for example, invoke re uh, rest method already has a retry, so you don't have to do this uh, manually. But you know, there might be other commandlets where it could be flaky and you want to retry up to a certain amount of times. The other thing that you can do with retries is you can actually give it a delay. So what I just did there was actually retrying as quickly as possible. So it did 10 retries, but it just retried as, as fast as possible. Um, so in order to specify like a wait time, you can use the retry wait parameter and then specify a time span. So I have a retry count of three and then two or three um, time spans to wait. So the first time I'm going to wait one second, then three seconds, then five seconds. And, um, instead of retrying as fast as possible, it will do those wait operations. So you can pass in an array of weights. So similarly, I'm just doing the exact same thing as last time. And you can see it's trying, but it's trying slower. <laughs> so um, it's gonna try three times and then eventually give up and throw that um, failed uh, exception. The other thing that you can do is you can actually retry forever. Um, or, and you can generate a um, the amount of time to wait between each retry dynamically. So um, you can think of this as maybe uh, kind of a linear progression where it retries, um, or this, the sleep duration between retries is longer and longer the more it, it fails. But um, I have an example here of where it is actually a policy that retries forever. It uses the sleep duration um, script block and I'm going to return a random time span. So you can see I'm calling get random. So it's going to wait one to 10 seconds. It's going to write host um, how many seconds it's going to wait between the retries. And then it's going to return a time span based on that random value. So again, we can just use our handy dandy failing script block um, to execute that policy. If I can get that to work. And now you can see it was sleeping for one second sleeping for six seconds, and this is just gonna retry uh, forever, so you gotta cancel it. But um, yeah, it's just picking a random value for the retry. So let's cancel that. Um, the next thing that we're gonna look at is um, a circuit breaker. So circuit breaker is 
a, a little weird. It was actually a concept I wasn't really aware of until I started playing with Polly. And the idea with a circuit breaker is not that it catches exceptions, but it stops executing your um, your script block if it fails a certain number of times. So, for example, uh, I'm going to create a circuit breaker uh, policy here. And I'll clean this up so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and we have a new poly policy. Uh, I'm using a circuit breaker uh, script block or um, switch parameter. <clears throat> and then I'm using the exceptions allowed before breaking. So um, the circuit breaker is currently closed is kind of the idea. And then um, if there are three exceptions thrown within five seconds or three exceptions thrown, it's going to open for five seconds, which means it's no longer going to be calling um, your script block. So uh, it kind of is like giving up and waiting is the idea, you know, like three exceptions are thrown. Let's wait five seconds before we try to do it again. But what's a little interesting about a circuit breaker is that it throws the exception. So you have to actually still handle the exception yourself. And let's just take a look at this policy object because the policy object actually has the circuits uh, state right now and the circuit state is closed. So that means that it will allow execution of the uh, circuit breaker. So let's let's do this uh, invoke command again where we're uh, failing. So I'm going to write host and then throw an exception. And you can see it throws the exception right away. It tried and threw the exception. Um, and if we look at the policy, it's still in a closed state. But you can see the last exception now is not listed there. So if we do that again, you can see it throws. If we do it again, you can see it throws. But now I've hit that third exception. So now if I do it again, you can see the circuit is now open and not allowing calls. So that means that um, the circuit breaker is open and it's gonna wait, I think, what do we have it set to? Five seconds before it closes again. So if you look at the policy, you can see now it's half open. And I think if we try to execute it, there we go. It like re-executed the call um, because we waited that five seconds and the circuit breaker like um, pretty much closed back up and allowed the call to go through. So if we continue to do this again, the circuit breaker will um, trigger and then we'll no longer be able to call that script block and it's going to stop that execution from uh, happening. So um, later on I'll show you how you can kind of combine this with a retry so that potentially you have a circuit breaker and a retry um, where uh, if the circuit breaker triggers you can you know start having a retry that kind of thing. So the other thing that you can do with this obviously is if you have um, some exception handling. So you can see here I have a <clears throat> Uh, for each and I am um, try catching that uh, exception call. So in this way, it's going to call it a bunch of times and then eventually it will uh, open that tr uh, that circuit. What's also cool about um, policies is they have like methods on them. So for example, if I were to look at this policy, um, you can see that it has things like um, reset. So if I were to actually reset the policy and look at the policy, you'll see that it's in closed state again. So it's like I can uh, access my um, my exception handler. So it's no no longer broken. So it kind of gives you the, a manual way to uh, reset the circuit breaker. Um, another really handy uh, function of poly is caching. So um, there's two different caching mechanisms. There's a sliding cache and an absolute cache. So an absolute cache is where we say like, I want to cache this until this particular time. So my absolute cache here is going to cache um, for one hour um, and I'm just gonna create that policy. And now to actually demonstrate that, I have a invoke poly command where I pass in the policy and my script block is calling get process and start sleep. Um, so you can imagine some long running process you have, like obviously get process, it doesn't take very long, but um, the start sleep does. And then we have to set an operation key. The idea here is like, this is the value we're caching. So that next time I call invoke poly command, it can look up that value in the cache. So when I run this now, you can see it's gonna take five seconds to actually execute get process and then execute start sleep. Then it returns the value. If I were to call this again, you can see it immediately returns because it's cached that value and it's no longer actually calling the script block. It's just returning the cached value uh, based on this operation key. <clears throat> the other policy you can set with caching is the ability to actually cache um, a sliding cache, which means that as you're uh, accessing it, that you know uh, cache policy continues to slide. And then once you don't access it for a little while, then it will um, 
you know, expire eventually. It'll invalidate the cache. All right. So uh, the last thing I want to show is how to combine um, poly policies. So I'm going to create a circuit breaker policy. Um, and it's just going to be the one we looked at before. And then I'll create a retry policy where it's actually going to retry a couple times. And remember, the circuit breaker will throw an exception. Uh, it's not going to like stop the exception from being thrown. It's just going to eventually no longer call the function and throw an exception. The retry will continue to retry um, based on the uh, retry policy. And uh, you can use join poly policy to actually combine these. So it's going to use the circuit breaker plus the retry to create a policy that's combined. So that means you could like, you know, integrate a bunch of different concepts into your uh, policy to make something a little more, um, I guess, intense. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our handy dandy failing policy. Um, I'm going to loop over it 10 times and just fail it. And you can see here, what's actually happening is the retry policy is kicking in because it's retrying it and the circuit breaker has happened and it's throwing the exception up through the circuit breaker and then the retry is continuing to happen. So we don't see the circuit breaker exception until the retries have um, actually failed um, over a certain amount of time. So it kind of gives you like a really cool way to kind of like aggregate together a bunch of um, kind of complex logic that you'd have to write out yourself. So in this video, we looked at um, how to create resilient PowerShell scripts with uh, PS Poly. Um, this is a very early version of this module, so definitely uh, kick the tires and let me know if you have feedback. And um, take a look at Poly. There's some more uh, functionality you could potentially add. So uh, if you see something interesting in that library, uh, definitely open a pull request or issue on the PS Poly repo.